Today we're going to install the Z Automotive's SRV controller on our Charger power net vehicle. So we got our Charger and we got our, our 5.7 motor and we got the 6.4 manifold on top of it. It's already installed and all that is done already. Now the part we want is to control the SRV, the short runner valve. That's what the SRV controller kit's all about. This is what you get in the box. You get the controller, you get the harness for inside the engine bay, you get the air to fuse tab that we're gonna need for power. We get the uh, can C harness, which we're gonna use inside the vehicle. And of course, you get the sticker. These are the things that we're suggesting that you use to install it. Electrical tape, we got some zip ties, got some sealer, okay, you can use whatever sealer you want. RTV black is nice. Power screwdriver is good. Little small flathead in case you need to pull out a wire. Diagonal cutters to cut those zip ties. Just your wrench right here. And a long screwdriver, Phillips, and also a pry tool to remove those clips that are holding the glove uh, box in place. This is going to be in our uh, engine bay. This is gonna be in our engine bay. These two parts are gonna be inside the vehicle, so we can separate them right now if you want to. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna connect this, this socket to the actuator at the back of the manifold. It's gonna be a blind connection. We're gonna to have to climb here to get it done. All right, so you're feeling around. You can feel the square connector way at the back. And once you're on that square connector, the red tab is gonna be facing towards the firewall as you're pushing up on that square connector. And you're not gonna hear it click in too well, but once it locks in, you're not gonna be able to pull it out. Do you put pressure on it to pull out? All right, now that we connected the, uh, the plug for the actuator at the back of the manifold, we're gonna route these wires. We have the two wires coming off it. We have the one three pin connector right here. We're gonna put that aside because we're gonna bring that inside the vehicle. And then we're gonna start routing the wire for the fuse tap and the ground. We're gonna use this ground peg as our ground for the SRV controller. We're just gonna loosen that up with our 13 millimeter. It's gonna hook right in here. We're actually using it for something else as well. Let's get that in there. So it goes around the bolt, tighten it down, and then retighten this here. We're gonna take the cover off of the fuse panel. This is our fuse tap. Notice it doesn't have a fuse in it. It's got the fuse for the SRV controller. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use fuse 28. That's actually the fuel pump for this vehicle. So we're gonna use that one. I'm gonna take that one out of here like so. I'm gonna use the uh, tool to pull it out. And then we're gonna put that in the fuse tap and it can go any way where you want, but it has to go on the lowest one that's closest to the conductors. All right, so we got the fuses in place in the fuse tap and we're just gonna make sure that we put the fuse tap in the right direction. Uh, that's important, otherwise it won't work. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna route the wire so that it doesn't get damaged when you put the cover on it. So you may wanna put like a little small hole towards the top so that it gives like a little indent and then wrap some electrical tape around it to protect the wire from getting worn through. All right, so we're gonna connect that together and make sure that's got a good seal on it. A little rubber tubing that goes around it. And if you wanted to, you could put some uh, electrical tape around as well. We're gonna route it underneath this so that it doesn't come near the positive there. And then we're gonna uh, clean this up. We're gonna route everything. And we'll use some zip ties to, to follow this line around. We got everything in place now. And we're just gonna snip our zip ties to uh, neaten them up a little bit. And we're keeping everything away from the engine. And we're just cleaning everything up. This is a heat resistant wire too, so it's very nice. And we'll get that done. We'll put the uh, this panel cover on. We finished in the engine bay. Now, we're gonna head back to the box. We're gonna grab our controller. We're gonna grab our uh, can C wire. So now, we're gonna need our tools. We're gonna need a pry tool. We're gonna need our power screwdriver and uh, this long Phillips. This is what's gonna punch through the uh, firewall. Take this panel off, then drop the door to the uh, glove box. Take off the glove box door, and then with a bunch of screws, there's about seven of them, unscrew them. Take out the glove box itself, have access to the firewall. This is our star connector. We're gonna use this to connect the can C to. Just to make things a little easier, I'm gonna remove this star connector, so this will be out of the way for us. All right, glove box is out, and now we're gonna go up to the uh, bushing in the firewall where those wires go, right there. So we're gonna push through with our long screwdriver 
All right, now that we have the screwdriver pointing through, we can use that to electrical tape around it and then the other end through around this three pin wire. And then we're gonna attach it together and pull it through the bushing inside the vehicle. To get the wire to go through the bushing on the firewall, it's actually better if you have a longer rod to do it with so that you can attach the wire to it with more tape so you can pull it through. So we got the wire through the uh, firewall. We use that bushing in the back. And now that we have this wire, is our three pin connector. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out our CAN-C connector, connect that to our three pin connector right there. It snaps right in nicely. Now we have our CAN-C connector here, and we have our six pin connector that's gonna go into the actual SRV controller. We'll put that right in together. Like that just snaps into place. See the light's starting to, to work for you. Now that we have that connected, we're gonna connect it right into the CAN-C bus, which is right here, this uh, green store bus right here, and we're gonna connect into that. It could be any free slot you want, it's fine. We're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna leave everything apart so that we can test its operation. We got everything installed. We're just gonna test it out. So to do that, we're just gonna drop the RPMs where it switches over to the uh, short runner valve. So we just need to press the ignition button twice, wait for it to initialize, wait for all your screens to come on. And we're gonna switch this center screen, the EVIC screen to our audio menu. Right now it's on audio, so we don't need to change that. And then we're gonna use the right arrow on the uh, steering wheel and then the cruise plus and minus to change the RPM of the uh, SRV controller. It's preset at 4,900, but we're gonna drop it down to 2,000 just so we can test it by just idling we should be able to, at that point, see the lights change when it reaches 2,000 RPM. All right, so we got 2,000 RPM. Just take your hands off the buttons and your values saved in the SRV controller. And now we're gonna start the vehicle and we're gonna watch the lights. We got a steady red, and that's because it's below 2,000 RPM. We're gonna raise the RPM as soon as it gets over 2,000. It turns green, perfect. That's what we want. And now it goes back to red as soon as we drop down below 2,000 RPM. Now we're going to turn the, the vehicle off. We want to make sure it goes to sleep. And we're going to open the driver Just door, make sure the vehicle goes to sleep as quickly as possible. And once the vehicle goes to sleep, that red light should go off. All right, final steps. Just zip tie this right up in here, out of the way. And then we're going to use our, our sealant on the bushing on the uh, in, inside the engine bay. We'll just make sure that's watertight and put the glove box back in and you're good to go. And that's the install. Scott, thanks so much for your help with the installation. As you can see, the SRV controller is a great option to have for those 5.7 owners who want to install a 6.4 intake, giving you the ability to custom select when your short runner valve activates. Be sure to see the description below for all compatible vehicles. Now, if you have a PowerNet vehicle like the one here, this video is perfect for you. But if you have a non-PowerNet vehicle, be sure to double check your user manual as there will be a few slight differences in the install. Lastly, if you like to see how our Taser programmer can actually help add layers of protection to your Mopar vehicle, be sure to watch this video here. And as always, thanks for watching.